Hello, my name is Jamie Cohen. I'm a clinical psychologist with the Psycho-Oncology Service at the Helen Diller Comprehensive Cancer Center at UCSF. I'm delighted to share with you today on behalf of UCSF Psycho-Oncology and the Survivorship Wellness Group Program, some guidance as to how we may, as individuals and collectively as a community, best navigate and cope with the challenges that may arise in the landscape of the ever-evolving COVID-19 pandemic. As with the global, national, and local response to this novel coronavirus, community efforts and teamwork are vital. The presentation I hope to offer you today is no different. I am grateful for the thoughtful and gracious contributions of colleagues, especially Survivorship Wellness co-facilitator Nina Javeri, for her efforts in compiling these resources for you today, which we hope you will find helpful. We've aimed to collate guidelines included here from reputable and verified sources. However, please approach these materials as guidelines and use what works best for you. We are undoubtedly in the midst of a largely unprecedented situation as our society responds to the risk of the novel coronavirus and COVID-19. For many, if not most of us, this can lead to feelings of stress and anxiety. We may also be grieving the sense of normalcy, predictability, and safety that we left behind, what may feel like simultaneously a few short weeks ago, though also many long weeks ago. We know that it is impossible to eliminate all of the current sources of stress from our lives, especially with a stressor of this nature. So it's important to explore how we can most adaptively respond. To begin, it's important for us to recognize that as human beings, we have all evolved internal mechanisms, a stress response system that is designed to help keep us safe in times of uncertainty or potential threat. Stress is a normal psychological and physical reaction to demands in our lives. Stress occurs when something happens that we feel inflicts a strain on us. When we perceive that we are unable to cope, we begin to feel stress. It is important to remember, however, that while sometimes disruptive and uncomfortable, stress can, in certain contexts, be beneficial. Stress helps us to act carefully. It fosters prevention and safeguarding behaviors and guides us to reduce unnecessary risk and exposure. Interestingly, even imagined or anticipated demands that have not yet occurred can cause stress in our lives. In our current landscape, this could include dealing with fear of falling ill, fear of loved ones falling ill, concern related to access to resources such as groceries or household items, finances, job security, or access to medical care. While universal in human nature, remember that stress is also highly individual. What one person may find stressful, another may not, and that's okay. You may find it helpful in times such as these to take inventory of your personal warning signs of stress. How do you know when your mind and body are activating in response to something that feels new or potentially worrisome or overwhelming? Perhaps you might feel this physically. Some examples might include muscle tension or aches, an upset stomach, fatigue, or sleeplessness. You may notice different emotions such as anxiety or nervousness, impatience, loneliness or sadness, or changes in your thinking, such as forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, or feeling more indecisive than usual. Perhaps you may notice your stress impacting the way in which you behave or interact with others, such as sleeping more or less, withdrawing from others, or finding less interest or pleasure in doing activities you once enjoyed. In stressful moments, we may also notice existential changes, such as feeling powerless or directionless, or yearning or longing to control circumstances that surround us. It's also important to note here that a few common physical signs of stress, such as decreased energy or more rapid breathing, may look and feel similar to coronavirus-related symptoms. This can, understandably, be quite confusing, unsettling, and even frightening, and we may attribute them to infection or illness, especially when we're feeling stressed. 
It's important to seek medical advice if you develop symptoms that concern you, such as fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, especially if any symptoms worsen or persist. The CDC has thankfully issued guidelines for what to do if you fear that you've fallen ill, which includes a list of emergency warning signs for COVID-19. I encourage you to consult their online resources on this topic for more information. In examining strategies for managing stress in the landscape of COVID-19, it is important for us to begin with appreciating the variables around which we may assert a sense of influence or control, as well as those variables which we may not be able to directly shift. One important way in which we may assert a sense of control is by remaining well-informed, though not over-informed or misinformed. By this we mean we encourage you to seek out evidence-based, reliable sources of information, such as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, and for those in our San Francisco Bay Area community, our online resources at UCSF Health. It might also be helpful to take note of how you consume information on the topic of the COVID-19 pandemic. What amount of news consumption works well for you and helps you to feel well-informed without adding to worry or agitation? Identify the various sources of news that you feel most compelled to explore. Perhaps these are television programs, apps on your phone, emails, or print newspapers. Do you have notifications and pop-ups enabled for news on your various devices? And explore what feels right for you. Perhaps it helps to have instant notifications so that you can feel on top of the situation. Or perhaps if you're feeling oversaturated, you might prefer to turn off some notifications and unsubscribe from some news updates simply to promote a sense of balance if you need it. You might also choose to experiment with setting aside some intentional boundary time each day to get up to date on the evolving news of the day. Avoiding news and media during the times of the day that we might feel most vulnerable to feeling stressed. For you, this might include first thing in the morning or perhaps late at night before trying to go to bed. Other ways in which we may assert a sense of control in challenging times is through the healing nature of connection with others. In times of uncertainty and stress, we need to double down on our social connections. Think about what sorts of support you may need at this time and who within your network may be most willing and equipped to meet those needs. Perhaps you are in need right now of tangible forms of support. For example, someone you trust to assist with procuring groceries or medicine on your behalf. Sometimes it is informational support we seek, guidance or advice on how to best proceed in safeguarding our own well being or the well being of those we care about. Perhaps it is emotional support you long for right now, a non judgmental, empathic ear, someone to bear witness to the hardships you're enduring. Or lastly, perhaps you find yourself gravitating towards filling a need for existential support. That is the form of support we derive from feeling connected to something bigger beyond ourselves. You may feel this through a sense of connection with a local or even global community of others, a spiritual or religious community, appreciating nature or being of service to those in need. Remember that your friends and family may be feeling similar to how you're feeling. Experiment with setting up a weekly or bi-weekly phone or video chat. For example, a group chat with old friends or with family members. Explore thinking outside of the box. Consider hosting something like a virtual game night or dinner party. Consider reconnecting with an old friend or acquaintance. Send them, send them a message and ask how they're holding up. It's also okay to suggest conversation topics other than this public health crisis. You may find that that's exactly what you and your loved ones need right now. When you connect with others, remember that not only are you nourishing yourself, but you are also performing a valuable public service. We improve our own sense of well being from knowing that we are being of support to others. Another key way in which we can reduce our stress is by reducing our risk. Dr. Alyssa Eppel, a stress researcher at UCSF, has advised, don't feel silly or embarrassed about taking reasonable precautions. 
Precautions she's recommended include practicing recommended social distancing and washing hands frequently, planning ahead to allow yourself to follow these recommended precautions, reduce uncertainty, and therein reduce stress. For example, take stock of grocery and household supplies that you have on hand and create a list of items you feel you might need for the next few weeks. Try to procure these items in a single trip if possible, thereby reducing the frequency of future trips you might need. You might also find that you need to call on the assistance of others for these sorts of tasks right now, and know that that is okay. If you're feeling hesitant at all about asking others for help, remember the sense of existential support you may be affording to others by allowing them to be of service to you in a time of need. If you do find yourself in a position to visit a store to procure supplies you need, consider visiting stores during special hours for seniors and individuals with pre-existing conditions. For hard to find items, you might also choose to call stores ahead of time to ask about their inventory or their supply delivery schedule. Smaller stores might be easier to call for this purpose than larger stores. Lastly, consider mentally preparing yourself that some things will take more effort or more time than usual. Psychologically pace yourself. Allow yourself some necessary kindness and patience here. Remember to take care of yourself. Physical activity is good medicine for the body as well as the mind. We are all exploring new and creative ways to stay active in the confines of our homes. Communities and institutions have in recent weeks rallied to offer free virtual exercise classes. Embrace a spirit of experimentation when exploring these. You may also be considering venturing outside for a walk while maintaining recommended physical distance from others, of course, should this be within the parameters deemed appropriate where you live. Allow yourself to also indulge in distraction. You might choose to visit the zoo or a museum or a historical site via virtual tours or live webcams. New options for these are appearing online day by day. Now is also a great time to use any other self-care or stress management techniques you know about, such as, but not limited to, relaxation techniques, such as deep intentional breathing, guided visualizations, or guided muscle relaxation, being mindful of self-talk and practicing self-compassion where we can, and embracing practices of gratitude for things big or small when this feels authentic to you. You may have days when you feel unable to practice the self-care that you hope to. That's okay. Do what you can when you can. We also need to acknowledge here that there are factors related to this pandemic around which we may not feel we can assert a sense of control. Here, we must tap into resilience. What emotional, mental, or physical challenges have you surmounted in the past? What are the new normals you have faced and then made it through? If you've made it this far, you've had to overcome some obstacles to get to where you are today. Know that that same strength and resilience that got you through that can get you through this. Fred Hutch, a psychologist and public health re researcher has said, a person can be sad, unhappy, or stressed, and still ultimately be resilient. Resilience is not the absence of feeling stressed, but finding a way to cope with it. Practice mindfulness. That is paying attention, observing something in the moment, a thought, a feeling, a physical experience, on purpose and without judgment or needing it to be something other than what it is. See if you can channel a sense of curiosity and explore acceptance of the new normal. Take it one day at a time, one moment at a time. It's natural and tempting to ruminate on catastrophic possibilities, the worst case scenario, and what if thoughts. Take a pause. Breathe into the present moment. Orient yourself to the safety that is to be had, where it can be had right now. These are unusual and surreal times, and they will not last forever. In the meantime, 
Embrace the sense of flexibility where you can and know that you are not alone. Thank you for spending this time today.